Hello and welcome. One of the great things about living here in China is that I get access to cars that I would never be able to drive if I was still in the United States. That of course refers to all the Chinese cars that we drive in this channel, but it also refers to cars like this, the very French Citroën C5X. French cars haven't been sold in the United States for more than 30 years now, but we're not just going to review this car because I'm interested in it. We're actually going to review it because European media, while they've been able to do static reviews, haven't been able to drive one, but we will. Let's get started. But before we get to the driving portion of this video, I want to talk a little bit about the exterior and interior styling. When I think about a French car, I think about funky. I want them to bring the funk when it comes to the look. And I do think that Citroën has done that with the C5X, mostly on the rear end, but we'll get to that in a moment. I appreciate the way that the uh, styling or the designers over at Citroën have paid attention to the details here. Specifically, you have these very nice upper LEDs here that create two Vs. What happens when you take a V and a V together? makes an X. You get the idea. You also have the nice chrome strips here that come together to make the Citroën Chevron, as well as this air intake down here, where they've taken the time to create this kind of wavy look. I do think that they've paid attention to the details, and it really shows. But the really interesting and, of course, funky stuff is happening here on the side, and especially the rear of the C5X. You see, the C5X is a crossover wagon coupe kind of estate thing. I'm not really sure how to categorize it. I just know that it looks very interesting with this sloping roof line here. This looks like a blacked out plastic area, but it's actually a window, which makes for a little better visibility for the driver. But it also has this lower black plastic cladding, which makes it look more like a kind of crossover or a soft rotor. It also has, of course, a very sporty look, thanks to not just one, but the spoilers. Our test car is one of only 1,000 Year of the Tiger Edition C5Xs that will be sold here in China. You can spot these special editions by looking for the red wheel inserts and a special Year of the Tiger badge. Here on the rear end, we have a continuation of the double V, making an X look here with these very cool rear tail lights. If we open up the rear hatch, and it is a hatch, we see a very decent amount of space, specifically 545 liters with the seats up, 1,640 liters with them folded down. Now, this is the petrol or gasoline version of the car. The PHEV version will have slightly less space, specifically 60 less liters for both of those numbers. If the exterior of the C5X brings the funk in a good way, I would say that certain things about the interior of it bring it in a not so good way. First, though, let's talk about the overall look. There are some interesting patterns going on here, especially here on the door with this kind of wood slash matrix type thing. I'm not sure how to describe it, but what I think is most interesting is here on the dashboard, which at first glance looks like carbon fiber, but it's actually soft touch. I've never seen that combination before. Then we have our slatherings of piano black plastic, different colors of leather from gray all the way to a, a black shade. It's not a very pretty color palette in my opinion, but the overall aesthetics of it really aren't very bad at all. Practically speaking, here we have a wireless charging pad for your phone, your cup holders, a pretty decent amount of space here in the center console area, and then your uh, shifter, which is actually more of a flicking switch back and forth like such. It's pretty good to use. I would say the button here for P is well placed, as is the M button here for the manual version of the uh, automatic transmission. 
Now, as I mentioned, though, this car also brings the French style funk in a not so good way here on the interior. What I mean is that there are certain things that just aren't particularly uh, intuitive. The center screen, for example, this is the new system from Citroen, I believe, and it is, well, not very good to use, at least not in the time that I've had the car. Maybe if I had it longer, I'd get more used to it. One particular Chinese media described it, <laughs> described it as having the worst system he'd ever used, one that your grandmother could have done a better job designing. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I will say I'm not overly impressed by it. There were some other little funky things. For example, this button here is used to adjust the volume as well as turn the volume on and off in the car. But that means if you turn it, the volume or rather the on or power logo spins with the knob. That means most of the time it's going to be kind of cockeyed. It's not actually going to be straight up and down. And if I was an owner, that would kind of bother me a little bit. Finally, one thing that I found particularly unintuitive was the HUD here. Now, the fact that there is a heads up display in a car at this price point is very good. I appreciate having one. It's very nice. But the way that you adjust the brightness and the position is not particularly intuitive. First of all, the position is adjusted using the same stock that you use for the side view mirrors, the folding and adjusting of those. That in itself took me a while to figure out. But then the brightness, instead of being just a simple button over here, is adjusted here in the center screen. Now, why would they do that? Why would they separate them like that? It's just not particularly intuitive or easy to use, and I just don't understand why they did it. Oh, yeah. The C5X is a mid-size vehicle, and it certainly looks it from the outside. Thankfully, it also feels it when you sit inside as well. What I mean is there is a very decent amount of space, both in terms of leg room as well as headroom. More than you might expect considering the coupe-like rear roof line. Uh, the styling, of course, matches that of the front. That I mean this kind of gray leather look to it. One thing I noticed is that there's only one USB port. I like to see two. You have at least two passengers back here. The other thing I want to say, and this is something I forgot to mention when it came to the front seat, is that this car has what Citroen refers to as, well, the metaphor they use is kind of a mattress topper, kind of an extra layer of foam on top of the regular seat to make it more comfortable. The result is, I have to say, just that. It is a very comfortable place to sit, both front and rear. On to the part of the video we've all been looking forward to the most, including myself, and that is the driving portion. As I mentioned before, the uh, European media have only been able to get a static view of this car, while we here in China have had access to it for some number of months, so I will actually be able to get to drive it, as you can see that I'm doing right now. Now, I will tell you that according to Citroen of China, there are a thousand of these that have already been built in the Chengdu factory specifically for export, but they are currently stuck somewhere between a port in China and a port in Europe. But hold out, they will be to you soon, I'm sure. But in the meantime, what is it like to drive? Well, keep in mind that this is the pure petrol version, the 1.6 liter four cylinder version, which means we don't have the uh, adaptive suspension of the PHEV version. That car is not even for sale here in China yet. What we do have, however, is what Citroen calls kind of a hydraulic bump stopper, a two-stage damper is the way you could think of it. What that means is that when this car goes over bumps, at least in theory, larger bumps, it is more comfortable than a car that doesn't have this two-stage damper. Now, is that true? Well, Citroen promised that this car would be the ultimate in comfort. Not really. That's not really the ultimate in comfort, but yeah, that's marketing speak. Nobody actually thought that it would be that. It is, however, a very comfortable car for this price point. Here in China, this petrol version runs about 22,000 to 26 or 27,000 US dollars. A little bit cheaper than this going to be in Europe. And I know Europe also is getting the 1.2 liter three cylinder, which China does not get. It is, however, comfortable, as I mentioned, for that price point. What it is not, however, is sophisticated. So what do I mean by sophisticated? Well, it offers pretty one dimensional comfort. When you hit a bump, it is, the bump is very well filtered through the cabin. However, there is some 
echoes of that bump through the suspension afterwards. What I mean is you hit a bump and then a car kind of goes bounce, 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 bounce. Instead of in a more sophisticated or higher end suspension, you get a bounce settle. You don't have that with this car. There's also a distinct lack of body control. This thing rolls over a lot, surprisingly. And because the steering is relatively direct, if a bit numb, it's very easy to get it to roll quite a bit. Um, in short, it's comfort, but without any of the more sophisticated body control or any kind of sporting intentions that you might get from a higher end suspension. So what about the other aspects of the vehicle, things like the engine and transmission? Well, as I mentioned, this is the pure petrol version, a 1.6 liter turbo four up front, 129 kilowatts, 250 newton meters of torque, 175 horsepower, and 185 pound feet. It's definitely not fast, but adequate, we can say. It is backed by an eight speed automatic transmission. My understanding is that all versions of this car will have an eight speed automatic, and the automatic is probably the weak link in that pair. What I mean is that while it's perfectly good around town, there are certain situations in where it's not so good. For example, when you're coming to a stop, regardless of whether you're cruising down with your foot off the brake and off the gas, or you're coming to a stop with your foot on the brake, say coming up to a stoplight, there is some noticeable hesitation in the downshifts of the transmission. Just the tuning could be a bit better, I think. This car comes with Citroen's um, driver assistance system. I believe it's just called Drive Assist. And I have to say, it's one of the least confidence-inspiring systems I've, I've ever used. It just feels nervous. The car actually feels nervous. It, it shakes. What I mean is that when the steering wheel, when you come up to a red light, for example, and it needs to stay in the lane, the steering wheel doesn't make confident, small adjustments. It just kind of goes like this and it vibrates. It's, it's actually quite upsetting to use, to be honest. This car, I also noticed, doesn't have auto hold, which is really surprising to me. I'm, why would the product planning people think that a car at this price point should have an HUD, but not auto hold? It's been a long time since, time since I drove a car that didn't have it, and I honestly missed it. I also realized, you know, I mentioned before that this car has some kind of counterintuitive design here on the interior. That includes the design for the heated and cooled seats. There is a button for your heated seats here on the dashboard. However, there is not a button for cooled seats. In order to activate the cooled seats, you have to go into a menu within the center screen. I think it's pretty possible that many people who buy this car wouldn't even realize they had cooled seats and only thought they had heated seats. So what's the takeaway for the C5X? Well, honestly, I'm not particularly impressed. I hold out hope for the PHEV version with its more powerful powertrain uh, and its adaptive suspension, but this standard 1.6 liter version, yeah, it's not exactly blowing me away. The C5X is certainly an important car for Citroën in the European market, but I would argue it is even more important for them here in the Chinese market, where their sales have been, well, less than stellar in recent years. They're banking a lot on this car to turn things around for them. Is it enough to do so? Well, I'm not particularly sure, but only time will tell. I will say that it is easily the most interesting and probably competitive car they've released in a number of years. All right, thank you very much for watching today's video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.